so we would discuss about the second investigation that is the electrooculogram right now what we are studying is, is the electro retinogram so basically uh, the basic difference between the electrooculogram and the electro retinogram is that in electrooculogram we place the electrodes in the cornea uh, basically we place it at the So basically now we would discuss about our second investigation that is the electroretinogram. Electroretinogram is based on the principle of measurement of resting potential between the cornea and the back of retina. Okay. So remember this is the basic principle of electro oculogram now we have to remember that there is a whenever we take an electro oculogram we take a reading at the dark phase and we take a reading in the light phase so basically when we have to investigate a patient for electro oculogram we put electrodes at the corners of eye and one electrode that is the ground electrode in the forehead so one electrode is at forehead and the other electrodes that we have taken is at the corners or the canthal region of the eye now we have to see the resting potential one resting potential we see in the dark phase so how down it goes let's say like this and one resting potential we see in the light phase okay so we see how big it goes so then we get a ratio that is called arden index many times the question has been asked on the arden index so first of all you have to remember that Arden index is done in the cases of electro oculogram. So what is Arden index? Basically Arden index is maximum height of light peak divided by minimum height of dark peak. Okay. So Arden index is maximum height of light peak divided by minimum height of dark peak here if the value is more than 1.85 it is considered as normal if it is between 1.6 to 1.85 it is considered as subnormal and if it is less than 1.65 then we call it very abnormal or very subnormal values so anything that is beyond 1.65 is considered as highly abnormal so your question would be sir why would you need an electrooculogram so the basic feature or basic use of electrooculogram when we have electroretinogram because basically both of them tell about the retinal function now electrooculogram is more specific in these cases where there is a functional interplay between the retinal pigment epithelium and the photoreceptors okay so it is more specific in the cases where any of these is involved so few things that you have to remember that it is the investigation of choice in a disease that is known as best vitelliform dystrophy also it is a supplement tool in addition to the electro retinogram 
so it supplements the finding of electroretinogram you can confirm the findings of electroretinogram with the electrophilogram more specific for the b wave so wherever there is a decrease in b wave you would get a decrease in the electrophilogram also also it is important in the cases of chloroquine toxicity and sidrosis bulbi where you may not be getting a very low ERG but you get a low EOG values so these are the important points regarding the electro